Hey everyone, come on somebody, welcome back. We're super, super stoked for today's episode because I believe we're gonna dive into some, some handles today that we're gonna share with you to come on, to innovate, to be an innovator and be a, a content creator, a creator, do you know, just like God, he created the universe. Come on, God is calling you to create the future. And I truly believe that the future is now, the next is here and here is now. I believe that we're living in the greatest times to be alive, it's a new era. Come on, while everybody's trying to go back to normal, I don't know what normal is. I believe that we're living in the greatest times to bring disruption to the world today. Come on, disruption. So, hey, my name is Henry and my wife and I get to lead an amazing community called City Church International. And we're super, super excited that you are watching, you are listening from different parts of the world. As a matter of fact, why don't you chime in, lean in on the chat line. Let us know where you're watching. Let us know where you're watching right now from and uh, wanna send you our greetings, come on, that you get to do this together with us today. Hey, I also wanna take the time to say thank you for all the generous investors, everyone that brings generosity to City Church International week after week, month after month, or maybe an annual give, one-time annual give. I wanna say thank you. We cannot do this without you. And uh, we're gonna be praying for you later on in the broadcast. So, hey, do me a favor. Get your notepad, come on, get your paper, pen, come on, iPad, whatever it is. And why don't you also share this content right now? Come on, share it with five of your friends, tag your friends right now and let them know, come on, let's grow together, let's transform together, let's evolve together. And um, so let's get started today. I'm super, super excited because I believe that today's topic will shift you and move you to break barriers. Come on, tear ceilings apart and get out of the box. I believe that uh, today's, uh, today's episode will give you that boldness and that courage, just like God gave Joshua, as we're gonna read in just a bit. Why don't we pray? Father, we just thank you, Father, for this moment in time that you've given us. I thank you, Father, Lord God, for innovation and creativity comes from you. I thank you, Father, Lord God, that you have placed, Father, and given us the power to create. Father, I thank you that today many lives will be transformed, many lives will be inspired. Father, many lives will come to you this day in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Amen. Come on. Super, super excited. I want to begin with this conversation. Fear kills innovation. Fear kills innovation. I want to draw it out of the sixth book out of the Bible. That is the book of Joshua. When I think of the book of Joshua, number one, it's the sixth book of the Bible. And the number six means the number of man. And also the sixth book of the Bible, the book of Joshua, is also where the Lord is charging Joshua, where God is commissioning Joshua and it's, it's a book of possession. It's a book of territory taking. It's a book of barrier breaking. It's a book of faith shaking, man. I love Joshua and I love what we can learn from chapter one in the book of Joshua. I wanna read three simple verses and we're gonna see how <clears throat> every verse, there's three words that are mentioned in these three verses that I believe today are going to be breathing into your life, into whatever space you're at right now, and it's going to inspire you, come on, to create the future. And look at what Joshua 1 verse 6 says. Look how it begins. It says, be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Verse 7. Only be strong 
and very courageous, come on somebody, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from, from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I'm going to just read one more verse, verse 18, because the way the chapter ends in chapter 1, look at how it ends. Only be strong and of good courage. Come on, I believe that right now, maybe you've been in the midst of, of disappointment, in the midst of discouragement, in the midst, maybe you're in a valley of decision. Uh, maybe right now you just find yourself in the middle of the process, in the middle of a crisis. But I am here to tell you today, only be strong and of good courage courage. I want to begin by this, by saying this, <clears throat> because we're going to talk about innovation. You're hearing the word innovation all over. It seems like ever since COVID, the word innovation has become louder and louder and has become amplified throughout the world today. But in reality, innovation has been from the beginning of the foundations of the earth. It is something that, that now the church is starting to turn Two, that you know what? You can be creative and follow God. You can, come on, create and be in the church so we can bring future outside of the church. You know, when I begin to think of the church, I'm not talking about a, a, a four-wall mortar brick building because if you feel that church is just that, we got a lot to learn and grow from because it's far beyond the four walls of the church. And here today, as we talk about innovation, I want to begin with this question. Are you playing to win or not? I want you to ask yourself that question. Are you playing to win or not? And the reason I ask that is because here's the truth about innovation. Organizations, companies, nonprofits, even churches, don't innovate. It's the people that do. It's the people that do. So when you begin to see organizations, whether they're for-profit or non-profit, Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 50 companies, um, and you begin to see that innovation starts to decline, what happens is the people in that organization, somewhere along the way, have become afraid of trying something. I want that to sink in right now. They become afraid of trying something. And when people in an organization, they become afraid, you know, because they don't want to fail, guess what happens? All of a sudden, just like in your vehicle, or just in your desktop, in your computer, when you want your computer to be lightning fast and all of a sudden it's just going, that you see that little icon, that circle just going over and over and over. You're ready to break your phone. You're ready to throw something to your, to, to your, your computer, your desktop. Or you start to see all these lights blink in your dashboard, these yellow lights start to flash. Maybe it's your tire that your left rear tire is low and, or maybe it's a sign that your battery or your brakes and you're like, oh man, this is not the right time for this. It's like, I don't need this right now. You know, it's just like that. The warning lights on the dashboards, they start to blink and with that blinking, is that the company is not innovating or your organization is not innovating anymore. The company is not trying. It's not taking risk anymore. You know, the company is not exploring new ground because there is an unmistaken feeling of 
fear. Remember, today we're talking about fear kills an ovation. And when that fear, when it's in the atmosphere or it's in your culture, it's in your organization, your church, your, your company, whatever it is, when that fear appears, it, it, it says we can't mess up happens in an organization. Like you're more afraid of messing up. It stunts the growth. It stunts the, it, it stunts the, the innovation of an organization. In other words, what really starts happening is you stop playing to win and you start playing, watch this, not to lose. Oh, geez. Let me say that again. You stop playing to win and you start playing not to lose. And the reason you stop playing not to lose is because you're not trying anything anymore because you don't want to fail. This unmistaken, you know, fear of failure, like, oh my God, if, if I fail, what, what's going to happen? And you know, you're afraid, you're scared, you're fearful. I believe as leaders, if we're going to be these leaders and these trailblazers and pioneers, as we're going to begin to, you know, trailblaze new trails for a new era of leaders, of emerging leaders, I believe that as a leader, one of the things that you and I got to do is when that we do see someone that is trying something in our organization and they failed or they say, look, here is what is going on. It's not trending. Maybe at that moment, it's not trending in the right direction. You're not getting the, the, the rapid response like you thought you were going to get. You, you, you don't get that instant quick you know, results. But I know that we're going to try this, even when we're going against the grain, even when we, we may feel that it's not trending in the right direction, we're going to try this. I tell you what, I don't know about you, but that's where I stand up and I begin to applaud. And that's where I begin to breathe courage to say, you know what? We're not afraid to go against the grain. It may not be headed in the right direction, but I'm not giving up right now. It's too soon to give up. It's too early to give up. You know what? Then that maybe you know, I'm, I'm against all odds and I hear what the critics are saying. I know what the data analytics are saying. I, I see the metrics. I see the dashboard. I see all that. But I'm going to stand up and applaud and say, you know what? You go, yo. Yo, you go, young innovator. And you see, you don't have to be just be a young innovator. You can be an innovator at any age. But we got to step out. Just like Joshua was doing. He was stepping out. He was stepping out. And yes, I get it. We all want to win. We want to be successful. We all want to be successful around here in our organization. But you, but you, as a leader, showing courage because you're an innovator, I tell you what, that's what innovation is. So I want to let young innovators, young Joshua's out there right now. Come on, I'm standing up with you. I'm, I'm applauding for you. I'm cheering for you right now. You know, I want to remind people, companies don't stop innovating, people do. So as a leader, I truly believe that as leaders, we got to go around breathing courage into people when you see people trying something new. Come on, a new era leader. Come on. I believe that in this first chapter of Joshua, God was breathing courage to Joshua. Take the land. Explore. Discover, occupy, possess, break down barriers. Come on, rip ceilings off, rip roofs off. I believe that, you know, while in this moment, even some are wanting to go back to normal. I'm like, what is normal? Like, God don't want us to go back to normal. Come on, I believe that this is the greatest time to bring disruption on the earth. Come on, disruption in the earth to make this place a better place. 
I mean, a great time to collab, a great time to come on, breathe fresh, godly ideas that will help humanity all over the world. I believe that it is, it is our moment in this time to give young innovators, innovators in general, to give them the courage. And when you do, I believe that they're going to continue to evolve. They're going to continue to innovate. And so will the company or the organization or the church. Don't be afraid to try and then fail. Come on, did you hear that? Don't be afraid to try and then fail. I believe that it is up to us to breathe courage into people when they are trying something new. And it will lead to innovation. So I'm going to tell you today, who can you breathe courage to? Who can you inspire courage to? Just like God did to Joshua. Come on. I mean, think about this. They, they went around a city called Jericho. And, and, and they were doing something out of the norm. I mean, <laughs> come on. They were marching around a city. Come on. They were blowing trumpets. Come on. That's outside the box. And so today, I, I, I want to just inspire you and encourage you. Come on. Don't be afraid to try and then fail. Come on. Fear kills innovation. Come on. God has put innovation in you, creativity in you, imagination in you. And so I want to let you know, come on. Let's go trailblaze new trails. Come on. Let's go lead the way. Come on. Let's be those influencers. Come on. Let's go bring impact and inspiration and transformation. Hallelujah. All over the world today. And I believe that through the creativity, come on, God's going to get glorified. God is going to be honored. Come on. And at the end of the day, come on, we're going to bring people back to life. So super, super stoked. I don't know about you, but you know what? The story of Joshua just in that chapter, come on, encourages me. Come on to encourage you this day. I leave it with this. It says, be strong and of good courage. Come on, be strong and of good courage. And maybe you have done things and you failed and you've been afraid to do things again. Maybe you've been disappointed in yourself. You've been discouraged or people put you down. People talked about you. But here today, come on, it's a brand new day. It's a new day today. It's a new time today. And I believe that you're getting back up again. And maybe right now you're watching and you're listening and you, you're saying, you know what, I'm, I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm not going to be afraid no more. I, I, I'm going to rise up. Come on, I'm, I'm going to square my shoulders again. I'm going to stand up again. Come on, if that's you, I want to pray with you right now. And I believe that the person that will lift you up today is Jesus and Jesus alone. To give you that courage and say, you know what, you're not a failure. Come on, you're not a product of your past. You're a product of grace. Come on, I believe that today, come on, Jesus will lift you up. Come on, let's pray this simple prayer. Jesus, I give you my heart. Come on, just that simple. Jesus, I give you my heart. Come on, and what that happens is you just gave Jesus permission to come into your heart. And a new beginning, a new life has started in you. A new creation has started in your life. Come on, so proud of you for you to just pray that simple prayer. Super, super stoked for you. Come on, only be strong and of good courage. Hey, I want to pray for generosity. You know, I love the culture of generosity at City Church International because it is very simple. We don't give to get, we get to give. And I, I believe that in our living is our giving. And you know what? I want to say thank you to all our faithful partners that faithfully tithe and give week after week, month after month. You know what? We can't do it without you to accomplish the mandate that God has called us to do. And that is to win souls and disciple nations. And it is through your generosity we can do this. Today, it's simple, safe, and secure to give. You can text to give or you can give online. You know what? We're so grateful. I, I'm a true believer of God's word that he says in, in Proverbs there, in, he says that he, the blessing of the Lord makes us rich 
and adds no sorrow. I'm reminded of this other scripture that he crowns our year with his goodness and his abundance drip with his abund abundance. I believe it with all my heart, come on, that God is bringing abundant living for you and then so that we can, come on, be the most generous and be the most kindest, be the most faith-filled people on planet Earth. Come on, thank you again for continuing to be a faithful partner as we expand, expand heaven on earth. Come on, as we go into the mission field, come on, love God, love people, serve others, and change the world. Come on, only be strong and of good courage. I'll see you in the next episode. Come on, go share this content. Let's go.